This is the story of the making of the sculpture that's behind the uh, foundry parking garage right over here. It's inspired by the uh, industrial history of Portsmouth. The sculpture is called Working. The site is uh, bordered by the North Mill Pond, the railroad tracks, and the McDonough Street neighborhood. So you can imagine that the workers came from the McDonough Street neighborhood and worked in the numerous factories, forges, and foundries of that area. And they did a lot of dangerous, dirty, and loud jobs. So this sculpture tries to recognize their efforts because they pushed the civilization of Portsmouth forward. And so I'm using the hammer as a symbol of their efforts. So the hammer has been used to uh, uh, symbolize work. It's an iconic uh, form to symbolize labor. It was cited by Voltaire in the 1700s. It was uh, last January in the Atlantic Monthly. They had a story about work, and sure enough, they had the hammer as a key point in the iconography of the hammer. So my interest is when you take a hammer off of its handle, it really looks like a human figure. So that's what I'm bringing to the table here. That's an ancient hammer on the left, a clutch of uh, historic hammers on the right. So I'm using, I'm using hammers to represent humans. So this is the site uh, today where the garage is. It's also the very site where the um, Portsmouth Machine Company was in the 1800s. And in that company, they made pulley wheels that powered the technology of the steam engine that created the civilization of railroad tracks and everything else. So the, the sites for art were the tower and the traffic circle. My process involved doing uh, 20 different sketches to flush out the di different configurations I had in mind. And I always used the elements of the railroad track, the hammer in the figurative form, and the pulley wheel representing the technology that was made on the site some uh, centuries ago. So from that, I, I went into three-dimensional form. So I started to make these little baby hammers. And I, you know, I used one, I used two, I used three, I used four. I, I, combined in pencils as railroad tracks, wheels. So I'm trying to flush out what this thing looks like in three dimensions. So uh, I then hired, because this was a competition to win a job, I hired Tam Graham um, to do this computer rendering of the project. So the railroad tracks represent time. They open up, they go out into the beyond. The wheel represents technology, both now and in the 1800s. And the hammers are humans at work, struggle, sacrifice, and hope. So then it went from uh, that rendering to doing actual scale models. So the importance of a scale clay model is that you get to flush out the, the proportions in the details of what you're doing. And so each one of these 13-inch uh, clay figures is a 9-foot steel hammer. So we went from, went from model form. Peter Hapney, the blacksmith that made the steel hammers, he had the wooden templates built, and then we had to draw the uh, figures of the hammers on the wooden templates so Peter could figure out where he wanted to put his support beams, and it was one of the last chances to flush out the gestures that the hammers had to make. So here I am with my friend Bruce Titro. We're digging up a railroad track that uh, Doug Pinciaro donated that was just on the other side of this building. And there I am with the, um, the saw, and I actually burnt my really nice wool sneakers off my feet. And, um, and just, just after that, I got bit by a dog. <laughs> Part of the job. So uh, Alex Ross, a structural engineer, did the, the work on the footings of all these uh, sculptures. Now each one weighs about 1,000 pounds, so Alex calculated the footings, the rebar. Carl Achill and Peter Hapney assembled all of that rebar in those concrete footings, and then we installed it on the site. Here we are excavating out the site. There's Carl and his buddy Pete Chadwick doing the wood forms. And then on the lower right, we have the, uh, the concrete footings and all the steel coming out of that. So that's four feet deep, and you can see all of the utility lines that are going to and from the parking garage right there. So concurrently with that, Peter Hapney had to heat, bend, and pound all the steel that went into the three hammers. So he, in the end, he created this in in intricate network or web of bent curvilinear steel that's the skeleton of each of the hammers um, that you're going to see later on. So uh, while that was going on, my friend Kristen, uh, Jeff Demers, and some guys from uh, Piscataqua Landscaping laid all the railroad track in place. So that stuff, the, the parts were donated by the Pan Am Company, and it's no easy trick trying to hammer in 100-year-old spikes that are both rusty and dull.
the skeletons then were transported up to uh, uh, blacksmith uh, David Court, who meticulously cut uh, all the, the different pieces of the steel and applied it to the skeletons that Peter Hapney had made, and he buffed all the seams uh, really shiny and bright, and so he put the skin on Peter's skeletons. And then right after that, Peter had this magic sauce that he sprayed on the, uh, the hammers to rust them almost within an hour. Um, you can see on the right there, Cassidy Brothers made the big pulley wheel, and it's being uh, lowered onto the tracks and mounted onto the tracks. Welder uh, John Henry is welding the hammers uh, onto those concrete footings and the steel plates that are underground. Uh, here's the finished product. Uh, one, it was uh, finished dis in uh, December 1, and I went out there shortly after, and there was a heavy frost, and uh, the hammer of struggle actually looks like it's sweating as it's pushing uh, the, wheel, the wheel of technology onto the tracks. So here's the finished product before the grass springs up. The railroad tracks is time, the, the wheel is technology, and the hammer of struggle, sacrifice, and hope. And here's me thanking my numerous workforce uh, with, the, the, with the help of the leftist marching band that played music between me talking and thanking. And then we had a big gathering. This is in mid-December. So this is the gathering of that workforce. And uh, my friends at the Liar's Bench made a beer called Working, and we all marched down to Liar's Bench to celebrate and drink the beer. So, it's the, and so there we have it. Thank you.